Well, it's not just down to Lukaku. If you're playing, if you're supposed to be the spearhead of a team, and you're supposed to be the main attacker, then the other ten are supposed to get you the ball. So it's not just down to him, but the fact that he did touch it so few times mm. tells you that he's heads away. You know, because he's gone through that game in a, in a dream. In a dream. Because, as I said yesterday on the show, if I'm playing centre forward and I haven't touched the ball, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going right. to make sure everybody knows about it. So I think mentally he's, he's struggling. And again, I don't think it should be a shock because he couldn't get, get it at Chelsea the first time round, which is why they let him go. He goes to West Brom, does great. Again, no pressure on him. Goes back to, back to Chelsea. He ends up going, getting a big move to United. What happened to United? Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah, he blew it up at Inter, didn't he, last season? Yeah, but, to... but, but again, you know, who, who, who goes from two of the top sides in the Premier League to Inter and then comes back? Nobody does that. There was a reason why two of the best sides in the country didn't want him, because he didn't think he was good enough. And because he does well in Italy... You think, okay, he's maybe learned. Well, he's shown that all the all the the bluster about I've matured, my games come on leaps and bounds. I, I don't see a change. His hold up play isn't any better than it was four or five years ago. His finishing's not any smoother. Yes, he got a ton of goals, and he got he will score goals if you get him the ball. But that comes back to what I said earlier. If you you get, have to get him the ball. If you get him the ball in, in, in the right position. So to your question, Dan, I, I don't necessarily think he's, he's hiding. Listen, he's had seven touches, including the, the touch-off. But at times when he got the ball, he was in a crowd. He did play players in. I, I think there are a couple of things at, at play here. As, as, as I said, partly because of, of Chelsea and, and how they play tactically, um, it doesn't suit Romelu Lukaku. But at the same time, he's got to figure out ways to get on the ball and have impacts in games. Lukaku was at his most impactful at, at, at West Brom, um, at Everton, at Inter, where, they, where he had room to run in behind the opponent. At Manchester United, he didn't. At Chelsea, he won't. The only teams who will press high up the park and, and offer space in behind are Manchester City, Liverpool, and to a lesser extent, Leeds. So as a result, Lukaku has got to adjust his game for what's asked of him by, by, the, uh, by, by the opponent. Just simply, whenever the ball happens to get to him, even if your touches are good, even if it, your passes find somebody else, that, that's nowhere near enough. You've got to make those adjustments during the game. Jules, what's going on behind the scenes here? Who brought in Lukaku? Well, we know for sure that he was not the first choice, of course. Erling Haaland was. Chelsea tried to sign Haaland, could not make it work. Lukaku was a, a very good second choice, but he was still second choice. I think there's a few reasons why we see him really struggling now. The first one, of course, is, is the lack of confidence, like the boys explained. I think the main one is the fact that the style of play of this Chelsea team is very, very different to the one at Inter Milan, where he was very involved in the build-up play, in the link-up play, he was touching the ball a lot. A lot of the things, maybe almost everything, was going through him and through Lautaro Martinez, very much centrally. It was that Chelsea is all about the wing-backs, it's all about building up to create a 2v1 on the side and then putting the ball in the box. And, and I think Tuchel sees him as a box player, which, which I don't think he sees himself as a box player. I think he wants to be far more, far more involved. And that's where the, the problem is, really. And especially when you take out Chilwell and Rhys James through injury, both of them pretty much at the same time. And both of them, as Tuchel explained today also in the press conference, at the, at the, at the best, really. I think that's, that's the main reasons why he's not, he's not doing as well as we thought he would before. I think Tuchel and Chelsea thought, OK, he's going to come in and he's going to finish the, the chances that we create, and we created a lot last season that we could not finish. It's just not as simple as that. And the problem is now is either you change everything and build everything around Lukaku, or you mm. stick to what has been successful for you, and Tuchel has been very successful, and you try somehow to make it work for Lukaku in this. What happens next, Ian? Well, what happens next is they play Lille, don't they, in the, in the Champions mm -hmm. League. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the selection off the back of that statistic, whether Lukaku is in the team. I suspect he will be, but they've looked maybe more effective this season when they've played somebody like Havertz 
in a false number nine. It seems to, to suit them better. So Tuchel's selection will be um, interesting. I mean, the, the easy answer for Lukaku is to deliver goals, isn't it? If he can deliver a couple of goals in this first leg, and Lille haven't been in the greatest form, they just let in five against Paris Saint-Germain um, a couple of games ago. So you'd think Chelsea are going to go through. You'd think Lukaku would have chances. But to, in fairness to him, the, the one thing I would say is um, we've seen a lot of replays of, of Chelsea games where are they really delivering the kind of crosses he might feed off at times? I mean, as as, as Julian was saying there, the two wing-backs are injured. There's not too many crosses going in, and he is pretty useful in the air. So he's not getting that kind of service, but he is off form, and he wouldn't be the first striker to go to Chelsea and it not work for him. Think of Chevchenko, Torres, uh, etc. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and of course, ESPN FC seven days a week, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.